On page 401 of your textbook, we begin with a new type of function. It's called a rational function. And this is how we start activity 5.1. Uh, they ask us to consider the function f of x equals 2x plus 12 divided by x minus 4. And they let us know that f of x is a rational function because it has the form f of x equals p of x over q of x. And it's interesting to note that Listen, p of x is, is simply some polynomial. It could be anything. In this case, the polynomial is 2x plus 12. And q of x can be any polynomial. In this case, x minus 4. Uh, and then they also go out to note that q of x cannot be equal to 0 because we know we cannot have a division by 0. All right, so to summarize some of the functions we've looked at, hold on for one moment. You remember we had linear equations, which were in the form of y equals mx plus b. We had the exponential equation, y equals a, b to the x, our quadratic. And now here's our rational, uh, which would be p of x over q of x. So I'd like to explore the domain of this rational function. We have a quick definition that says the domain of any function that consists uh, of all values of x for which the function is defined. All right, so when I think about this rational function, uh, if I had x equals four, that would make my function undefined, right? So division by zero is undefined. So my domain would really be all real numbers, except x equals four, um, because x equals four would make my function undefined, okay? And then they kind of give us a few steps down here uh, what's a quick way to define the domain for a rational function? They said, I set the denominator equal to zero, solve uh, the domain as all real numbers except the values of x which make the denominator zero. And then we have a few problems to practice. So number one says find the domain for the following functions. So we'll start out with the 2x plus 12 over x minus 4. And I'm going to work this problem on a separate piece of paper. If I take the denominator and set that equal to 0, I'll have x minus 4 equals 0, and then I'll solve that uh, equation for x. So here's me setting the denominator equal to 0, x minus 4 equals 0. And now if I add 4 to both sides, I'm going to be left with x equals 4. Right, so really, what value of x would make this denominator 0? It's, it's clear that if I place a 4 minus 4, I end up with 0. So the domain for this function would be all real numbers except x equals 4. Right, we know x cannot equal 4. So I typed in the domain is all real numbers except x equals 4. Uh, some people would even write all real numbers and then x cannot equal 4 with the uh, equal sign and a line through it. Okay. The second problem, again, you have to ask yourself what value of x will result in a zero denominator? So uh, I might want to factor this trinomial to see what values of x would result in zero. And again, I'm going to work this problem on a separate piece of paper. So here's my problem. I want to set the denominator equal to 0. So if we set the denominator to 0, we'll have x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. And now we can factor this. We, we learned that technique uh, somewhere in chapter 4. So the x squared plus 7x plus 12 becomes x plus 3 times x plus 4 when we factor. Right, remember, what two numbers when multiplied result in 12? That's 3 times 4. And when I add the 3x plus 4x, I get 7x. Set that equal to 0, and you see that the value negative 3 and negative 4 would result in a zero denominator. So the domain for this function would be all real numbers except x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 4. So I type my answer, the domain is all real numbers except x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 4. Okay, so that's my answer for the, for the next one. We have two more to go. On the next page of our book, uh, we have x squared minus 8x plus 12 
divided by x cubed minus uh, x, and I'm looking for the domain. Uh, so again, I want to set my denominator equal to zero and see what values of x would result in a zero denominator. And again, I'm going to work this out on separate paper. So again, I take my denominator and I set that equal to zero. And now I can factor out an x to factor this a little bit down to x times the quantity of x squared minus 1. And then we should remember x squared minus 1 uh, really is the difference of two perfect squares. Right? We learned this rule earlier in chapter 4. a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b. So when I have x squared minus 1, I can write x minus 1, x plus 1. So instead of x times x squared minus 1, I can write x times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 1. We set that equal to 0. And the values that will give me 0 would be x equals 0, x equals positive 1, and x equals negative 1. So I have three answers here. If I put a 0 in for x cubed minus 0, that, that's 0. If I put a 1 in cubed and subtract that from 1, it's still 0. And if I put a negative 1 in and I subtract the negative 1, I still get 0. So my answers would be the domain is all real numbers except x equals 0, x equals negative 1, and x equals positive 1. So for this problem, I'm going to say the domain is all real numbers except x equals 0, 1, and negative 1. And maybe I'll rewrite this. Here we go. And for the last problem, well, think about this. Are there any values of x that would make my denominator 0? And the answer is no. All right, so my domain is all real numbers except what makes my denominator 0, what x values make my denominator 0. And I can't think of a value that I'd place into x and square that would leave me with a zero denominator. So the answer for this last problem would be the domain is all real numbers. And if you think about this, if we graph x squared divided by 5, it's just a parabola. There are no breaks in my graph. Whereas the other three examples, there would be a break in my graph that occurs at x equals 4 or negative 3 or negative 4. So I type in the domain is all real numbers. Uh, before I go, I want to quickly just graph maybe two of these just to, to show you what happens at the exceptions. Okay, so first I'm going to graph the 2x plus 12 divided by x minus 4. So in parentheses, I'm going to place my numerator, 2x plus 12. It's important to separate your numerator and your denominator by using parentheses, x minus 4. Right, so there's my numerator, my denominator. Uh, I'll use a standard window. So I'll press zoom and see number six as standard. That'll just give me a window that has 10 tick marks in each direction. And, and you'll notice some calculators will draw a solid line. Some calculators will draw a dotted line. My calculator does not draw any line. But notice that one, two, three, four, there's a space. It's an imaginary dotted line that we don't touch. And that happens at x equals 4, right? So all of these graphs, if I were to graph 1 over x squared plus 7x plus 12, there'd be an imaginary dotted line at x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 4. If I draw this x squared divided by 5, you'll see there are no breaks in the graph because there's no values. There are no exceptions to my domain. So I'm going to try that now. I press y equals, and I'm going to enter x squared divided by 5. And you'll see we just have a wide parabola, but there are really no imaginary dotted lines uh, because the domain is all real numbers. So that's it for this video. Look for part two um, in a few moments.